Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here. Tuesday now, the 22nd of July, 2025. Thanks for clicking on today's video and giving it a watch and a listen. Going to talk about how things are gradually becoming a little bit more favorable. Of course, it is a process. We are perhaps used to seeing seasons that get started early, May in some cases, but it's been a couple of years now. And then we get some activity in June and July. Last year we had barrel category five there in early July. So we might be sort of thinking, well, things are really slow right now because we haven't had anything like that. Well, yes, it is slow right now, but we're actually pretty much where we should be overall. June and July, not very busy months. The Atlantic takes time to get conditionally favorable for tropical cyclones to form. And every year is different. There are different puzzle pieces that get moved around even as the season progresses. So I figured let's take a look at some of those things today and we will go from there. All right. Again, thanks for tuning in. Let's get started first. Here's a post from our good friend on the internet, and I know this gentleman personally as well. Some people I've never met, and we rely on their expertise, but I know Michael Lowry personally, and he always does these terrific graphics. I love a good visual, a good map and a good set of data that we can talk about. So what is he mentioning today? The Atlantic, he says, isn't looking nearly as unfriendly to would-be storms as it was just a few weeks ago. Today, a deep dive into what's driving the big changes and what it could mean for August. If you like inside baseball, you'll like today's newsletter, and I'm going to put a link to this off of his substack in today's description because it's a good read, and instead of going over the whole thing here, you guys can read it, but I did want to show you these two graphics here because these are important. The Atlantic Main Development Region, weekly sea surface temperature, and where it's been so far this year, uh, we saw it pretty close to the average, a few dips below um, in recent months, really since the spring, but lately it has really skyrocketed. I guess that might be a little bit hyperbolic, but it has definitely deviated from the norm and now you can see with the rest of this activity up here above the plot it is no longer in sort of the normal traffic area that's outside of it so it's starting to reach some of your upper echelons of really warm relative to average why has this happened well it's easily explained by this graphic uh, since the beginning of the year the Low-level winds, and uh, somebody asked over here, this was uh, Jeff Berardelli asked, pay attention to the right side of the screen real quick, what layer are you using for those low-level winds? 925 millibars, so, you know, just a few thousand feet above the surface, something like that. And so what we have been seeing for most of 2025 here is a strong wind flow across this pink area here, that is pink, right? And it's pink enough for me. Uh, the main development region, we have seen strong winds coming uh, across these easterlies here, much stronger than normal, and that has helped to really mix things up. The easiest way to understand this, come back on my expression, I like to talk to you, not just at you. You take a big cup of coffee, a cup of soup, whatever, it's hot, you blow across the top of it, it cools it off, and then you can enjoy it without burning your lips or the roof of your mouth. The ocean is kind of the same way. You blow the air across it nice and strong and it mixes things up. It creates evaporation. And in this case, it lowers the sea surface temperatures, especially when those easterly anomalies or the anomalies from any direction. In the Pacific, we look at westerly, westerly anomalies when we get El Nino and easterly anomalies gives us a La Nina. But once those winds are very persistent, and that's the key, let me drop back out here so I can show you this. Uh, those winds have been persistently strong with ups and downs, but generally very much strong relative to average until recently. And then we have seen things plummet here with those 925 millibar winds. They have slowed, and therefore the Atlantic down here, the main development region, has been able to warm, anomalously so. We go back to the previous graphic. You can see that that is represented here with this spike. Those two are directly related. So a very, very good post here. And again, I'll put a link to that 
If you want to read the details of it, I encourage you to do so. This is what it looks like on one of my favorite tools, the, well, we currently call it the Daily Global 5 Kilometer Satellite Sea Surface Temperature Anomalies Map. For us, we'll just call it the Anomalies Map. And here, too, we can clearly see, let's use black here, uh, that the main development region has warmed, and even the canary current over here, whereas before it was cooler. And uh, the subtropical Atlantic up here, the northern latitudes, remains impressively warm relative to average. But the Caribbean, especially the eastern, the western and end of the Gulf, all anomalously warm, while that La Nina trying to come back here. We're definitely not in El Nino. I mentioned that yesterday. But we're going to have to really keep an eye on this because below the surface here, at the subsurface, more cold water relative to average is waiting. And because the winds here are strong from the east, also easterly winds coming across this way, it helps to upwell that colder water because you can't just bang it into South America. There's a big continent in the way. So the conveyor belt stops with the water kind of upwelling over here. This is a simple way to explain it, but the strong easterly winds that we've seen recently in the Pacific have cooled this off, while the easterlies in the Atlantic over here have relaxed some. Just showed you that on Michael's charts, and the Atlantic has been able to warm. So that's interesting stuff as we move forward. Now here's also something interesting. It's all in how you present the data, isn't it? I saw this and I was like, whoa, I wonder what Dr. Maui is showing today. That jumps out at you. So to compare and contrast the information from Michael Lowry and the map that I just showed you there, the uh, coral reef map, the anomalies map, check this out here from Dr. Ryan Maui. Ocean surface temperatures are markedly cooler this July than in 2024 across the Atlantic Basin where tropical storms typically form. There aren't any. There's nothing out there right now, of course. However, he says, the weather patterns have persisted with weak winds and few clouds to dramatically warm up the waters around Bermuda. That's what I was pointing out to you, that we've got this area in the subtropics up here uh, where the winds have been lighter, have had that big heat ridge sitting over the area, and so everything's just kind of been eh, more or less undisturbed. But this is a little bit... I don't want to use the word misleading because I don't want to imply anything nefarious, but it's how you use your legends and how you understand what you're looking at to interpret the data. You might look at that and think, oh, it's cold. It must be really cold. Those, those must be really like strong anomalies on the um, negative side of normal. Why does that differ from the map you just showed? But that's where you have to read uh, you know, the information that's presented. This is your sea surface temperature difference between 2024 and now. So you take 24, you subtract what we've got now, that's the map. Dr. Maui knows how to code such things up, and therefore we get this very interesting map that implies, just by looking at it, wow, it must be a lot colder out there this year. We're probably not going to get any hurricanes to form. But nothing could be further from the truth. As I showed you, Water temperatures are actually warmer than average, but they are significantly cooler than last year. I'd also like to remind you, we did not, despite the very warm tropical Atlantic here last year, did not have a whole bunch of deep tropical activity. In fact, the two major hurricanes that impacted the United States originated either in the Gulf or the Caribbean, and that would be Helene and Milton. You understand? They did not track from Cabo Verde all the way across and come up and do that. Same thing with Milton that didn't come over and do that. Nope, they all had their origins over here. So just wanted to point that out. Water temperatures are not the entire picture, but they are certainly very important. So a lot of different data sets that I wanted to show you here. I look at this stuff, we talk about it in some of our social media groups where we can compare and contrast things, and I wanted to present it to you today. So where do things look to go from here? Well, before we get into the future, let's look at the past real quick. This is all the past. You see we're going backwards in time to late June. These are all of your strong easterly wind anomalies at the 850 millibar level, which is 5,000 feet, so a little bit higher in the atmosphere than what Michael Lowry was talking about, but not by much. So these are all these strong easterly winds that went across the tropical Pacific 
up until recently, and that has resulted in a pretty noticeable cooling in the INSO areas. I showed you that. Meanwhile, this is the relaxation of the 5,000 foot winds, especially once we got into early July here. Uh, all of these reds and oranges in here, just the lack of blue, means a slackening of those strong easterly winds, the zonal winds down there. What about the future? This is the uh, origin of the forecast right here. This is going forward in time to about the 6th of August. More easterly wind uh, you know, regime is forecast by the modeling uh, to close out the month in the equatorial Pacific. See, these are your longitudinal areas. This is where it's valid. And it's called a Havmuller diagram. And then on the other side, South America would be like in here, you know, kind of split in the middle. And this is, this is the Atlantic and uh, the Caribbean and the Gulf in the vicinity. And then Africa would be like way over here. Um, generally, light winds overall, maybe a little bit of a, an uptick in stronger easterlies, but nothing at all like that. So we would have to just assume the Pacific will keep cooling and the Atlantic will at least stay as warm as it is relative to average as we approach August. In fact, some of the guidance indicating a pretty good dip here pretty soon once we really get into the peak months of the season for our ENSO area, the 3.4 region, nothing indicating an El Nino, not even close, not going to happen. I'm 100% certain of it. I would bet my life on it, yes. And so that's important because we're seeing this warming gradually take shape and other parameters gradually falling into place where we could get a pretty active back part of the season. So what's happening out there today? You remember yesterday, this was 94L. It's not so much that it's not 94L anymore, it's just not designated as such because it doesn't look like it's going to be a threat. A threat for what, you might ask? And that is important. The threat for this to become a tropical cyclone, basically zero. I mean, there's always a non-zero chance, right? But that doesn't mean, I was saying this yesterday too, that it's going to just be gone. Because you can see as well as I can, there it is. It's still there. The disturbance, the tropical wave, it's curled up a little bit. There's some rotation. All of that energy, all of that squally weather, that's headed toward the windward and leeward islands. So you folks there need to be ready for this. Not telling you anything that should be too shocking to you. You live down there. You know these things are coming. In fact, they can bring beneficial tank rain, as they call it, depending on where you live. Yep, the fresh water, you need it to fall from the sky many times uh, to get your fresh water supply. So this will bring some squally weather. And you can kind of see why it's called a tropical wave. It's this easterly wave of low pressure embedded in the trades down here. And they just ride along. About 100 of them or so come off of Africa each year. Another one sitting back over here, a little bit juicier overall, pretty low latitude there. And, you know, we'll have to watch these, but still, I know enough by what I'm looking at to see that there's a pretty dry Saharan air layer to the north, kind of enveloping these systems, keeping them pretty much in check for now. And we can see that clearly on the very bright orange and some pink and red in there, Saharan air layer analysis. But this is really neat. Um, I guess I'm going to have to use this sky blue color to make this pop. Look at how you see the waviness in here. Kind of like why we call these tropical waves. I mean, that's part of it. We call them easterly waves, the African, African easterly wave. They're kind of like inverted troughs. But they come off at these different periods, just like you see waves in the ocean, usually a few days apart. And there they are out there, clearly surrounded by warm, dry air for now. And uh, this is what the GFS figured I'd show you out to the next week. We are looking generally down, let's use black again here, uh, in this region, you know, might as well, and then certainly over here closer to home, depending on where your home is, I guess, right? And really nothing over the next week to be too concerned with. There it is, 168. But let's just back it up a little bit. Watch this little piece of energy right there. That's the reflection of that tropical wave. And on it goes some of that energy into the islands, and that will bring some showers and thunderstorms. So if you're down there vacationing, boating, fishing, hanging out, whatever, just be mindful of that. And then there are other, are other weak pieces of energy coming across as well. Tis the season, and once we get probably towards the latter part of August, 
this will start to become much more favorable and the models are going to start picking up on stuff, I do believe. But really, right now, we are, I mean, all intents and purposes, right where we should be. Maybe a little bit behind overall. We've had three name storms, but very short-lived, very close to land. Not much out of the deep tropics. But again, I wouldn't expect that there would be in an average type season. Usually, it's about a month from now that we really start to anticipate things picking up. Now look, I'm not going to take the next month off. There's always going to be something to talk about. And with that being said, I'll wrap today's video up for you. And we'll be back tomorrow. We'll talk about something else. See what pops up and we shall discuss. All right? From all of us at Hurricane Track, a great community we got here. Appreciate you tuning in. Again, I'm Mark Suddeth. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.